Number one thing though I want to not do is not cut myself. So I'm making kimchi fried rice. Kimchi is a spicy pickled cabbage and it's a staple in a Korean household. A lot of Americans have a fridge for beers or alcohol in their garage as well. A lot of Koreans have a fridge just for kimchi. I always have kimchi and leftover white rice in my fridge. And so whenever I come home late at night and I'm just like, you know, I wanna make something quick, I always fry up some rice with some soy sauce, some sesame oil and some leftover veggies and kimchi. And it just tastes like home to me. When my girlfriend and I first started dating, one of our first dates, I cooked her kimchi fried rice. And I think that's what sealed the deal. So I think we're, we're good. Come on, hot dog, cooperate. Stay still, dude, stay still, man. Come on, there we go. Today I'm making pineapple with fried rice. It's a dish that I ate when I was in college. There's whatever was left in the dorm refrigerator and putting it together, season it with some traditional Vietnamese sauces. My fried rice has hot dogs, some grilled pineapple, and canned ham. Canned ham is sweet, it's salty, it's savory and you fry it, it's crispy, it's yummy. My family always have it in their pantry. Look at that, that's beautiful. I feel pretty confident about my dish, but as I look around, I see Tony is also making fried rice. Tony is a great home cook, and Tony is younger, and Tony's taller, and he's better looking. Man, come on. Please don't cook fried rice as well. Ooh, something smells good. I don't know what it is, but... Chorizo! It's chorizo! <laughs> Sylvia, the Sylvia dish. Love it. For this round, I'm making choriqueso, which is a combination between chorizo and cheese, and I'm serving it with some homemade flour tortillas. Also, I'm making the size of guacamole because avocados and tomatoes are always in my fridge. You see? That's my chopped guacamole. No smash. Just, you can see every piece in there. My kids will be happy to eat at any time of the day. It's like a snack, and it's so delicious. So I'm making flour tortillas, which they're very easy to make at home. They just need four ingredients. Flour, water, lard, and the salt. So I'm just waiting and kneading so I can have more uniform tortillas. And then I need to let the dough rest to get flexible and smooth. Maybe it's a little ambitious, but I like flour tortillas with the queso. So go big or go home, I think. <laughs> All right, we've got feta, olives, some herbs, and tomatoes. I am making shakshuka. That's sort of a Moroccan dish. Who do you usually make Whoever's at my house eating, because <laughs> there's always somebody there eating. <laughs> I do not keep very much in my pantry. I like to get most of my products fresh. I grow tomatoes and peppers, but I use canned tomatoes when it's not tomato season. Chakchuka is the easy dish for me because it's a delicious spicy tomato sauce with an egg on top. Perfect. All right. I am going to attempt to get a quick little flatbread going here. I want the judges to have something to dip in the eggs, and I don't want to give them a store-bought piece of bread. Just a little nibble of something to dunk in the egg. Baking is sometimes very technical. It's, it's niggly. You have to follow measurements, and it's not so much cooked by how you feel or how you think, but I love it. Let's see how these babies are doing. That's yet. How's it going over there? Oh, wow, aren't you looking good? Soup's got to cook. Soup's got to cook. So when I have to cook a dish in a pinch at home, the best way to do that is take a note from my childhood and get some Zuppa Toscano on the stove. Zuppa Toscano, or Tuscan soup, is a hearty, everyday Italian soup. It uses bacon, spicy sausage, and a hearty broth, a little bit of cream, Parmesan cheese. We're getting there. Pan's heating up. I learned how to make this soup from my friend and brother from another mother. His family is Italian. When I met my wife, we adapted it for leaner means, replacing potato with cauliflower. What makes my food unique is my strong sense of experimentation and flavors, and I think that that will go a long way in this competition. Drink up, friends. All right, I am officially naked. <laughs> 
What I'm making is a dish called chicken Sicilian, and it's uh, gonna be chicken that I've seasoned up. Some shallot and garlic, hot pepper and chini peppers, sun-dried tomatoes, marinated artichoke hots, and some oven roasted potatoes. All right, keep going. I put a little twist on it. In the traditional dish, they use cherry tomatoes in it, where I like sun-dried tomatoes a little bit better. I think it adds a little sweetness to all the acidic stuff that's inside of it. I make it in the firehouse quite often because we're always eating on the go and things have to be fast. Italian food's great for feeding. A lot of people, we like pretty big meals. We are looking good. With my grandmother, if you could eat like a giant plate of food. And then she'd be like, oh, do you want some more? It's like, no, I'm absolutely stuffed. Oh, what's the matter? Didn't you like it? I ate 10 pounds of it, you know? <laughs> Chicken's looking good. I'm preparing myself for what's next. 30 minutes. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> Exciting business right here. Mm -hmm. See how big she could chop that garlic today. This round, we have to showcase dishes that you can make fairly quickly. And for me, that's going to be bacalaitos, which is a Spanish term for cod fritters. Oh, no. Is this going to fit in there? <laughs> oh, problem number one. It's traditional to our Dominican and Puerto Rican culture. But there was a time when this was not easily made, because you had to take all the salt off your codfish, and this took hours. But now we use Pollock fish, which is readily accessible. I keep it in my freezer all the time. There's a history there. There's a reason why Puerto Ricans were always using dried salted cod, and it's because uh, that's the part of our culture that came over from Spain. That salted cod had to survive the boat right over. Well, I'm making a mess, but this is my batter. So this is Pollock fish, and I added my favorite seasonings, my, the adobo that I make from scratch. It's coriander and annatto, garlic powder, turmeric, and oregano, and I chopped a ton of cilantro and garlic in here. It just makes a nice little batter that I'm not gonna fry, and you're gonna get these nice little fritters. If you just wanna eat something warm and fried and just good, bacalaitos. Do it, you know, do it, you know, do it, you know. I am making a pork ragu with polenta, and it's my jam because I make it all the time in my pressure cooker. This is me in a pinch because we have a crazy busy lifestyle. I'm a work from home mom, so this lets me put everything in the pressure cooker. And I can still be a mom, I can run carpool. I know that food is cooking, and then I just have to wait for it to be done, and then I can serve it when everyone's back home. Also, this dish speaks to my Italian roots. Who doesn't love a ragu? Boo! Hi! How hey, are Douglas. you? I see you're making some fried rice. I'm doing fried rice. And there's another fried rice <laughs> happening in the room today. Oh, the battle of fried rice. He better watch out. <laughs> what is making yours different than Tony's fried rice? We got some hot dogs and we're gonna sweeten it up with some pineapple. Fried rice is so versatile. You can really add whatever ingredients you have. Throw whatever you have in the fridge and that's why I love it so much. My wife and I have two little girls as mm -hmm. well and we work. So it's, as you stated, Leah, it's such an easy portable dish. By portable, I mean that you could pour everything out of yeah. the fridge and dump it into yeah. a walk. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you so much, Foo. Can't thank wait to you. try it. Good luck. Thank, thank you, thank you. Hi, this is Alejandra Ramos. I am so excited to be a part of the Great American Recipe on PBS. Here's more delicious moments from the show for you to devour. You can watch the full competition on the PBS video app. And if you're looking for recipes, head over to pbs.org food.